What makes you hopeful that we can reach net zero emissions by 2050? Scotland produces too much renewable energy that it's capable of powering multiple Scotlands. That sounds nice, multiple Scotlands. Maybe we could replace bits of South England with more Scotlands. I'm really tired and read that as multiple sclerosis. I live in Mexico, so absolutely nothing makes me hopeful. If anything, we will generate more emissions than before. I live in Germany, and, same. People vote for the Greens that do nothing and think they're saving the environment with 2.5 ton electric sports cars. This is my concern. Globally, the financial incentive to provide the cheapest energy possible, which is often not green, is minimal. It's a hard balance and it takes a devoted nation that is well off financially. And some global powers are indifferent. My greatest concern is that it would take war to achieve clean energy on a global scale. Improvements in energy sources, such as more nuclear power plants and solar farms. More and more cities switching to electric or natural gas-powered buses. The increased awareness of climate change by millennials. Edit, I should also mention the amount of companies that are promising to operate zero-emission factories. That is also a big step towards zero emissions. Don't forget hydroelectricity. Water actually helps contribute a surprising amount towards clean, renewable energy. In many places, solar power is now the cheapest way to generate electricity. It's amazing how quickly costs have fallen. Trying to find hope in this thread because I don't have any. My knee jerk was nothing so I'm just posting in this helpless thread with all you other pessimistic realists. This thread isn't great at explaining the myriad reasons to be hopeful. Tons of the best ones are active measures to put carbon back into products, or projects like the Saharan Green Wall. We need the transitions that are already happening and to stop subsidizing oil so the real costs can hit the market with appropriately taxed and apportioned dangers, but the things that will push us over the edge are the four new types of nuclear power being actively explored beyond just test reactors again, tons of biofuel or bioprocessing systems to take greenhouse gases out for chemical products or physical ones to store for later use. The problem is the ramifications before or after, politically or how much we let conservatives actively hamper us, it won't be on individual conservation or whether or not we have the tech. Covid shifting huge portions of the western workforce away from the commute to work 5 days a week system will drastically reduce urban weekday carbon emissions. My company is sending everyone back into the office. All 5,000 employees, with a large portion of them having to commute around two hours to work. Despite them doing a survey on whether people prefer working from home or not, and 92% said they preferred working at home. Productivity went up, sickness went down and we didn't have a high staff turnover, but they insist because relationships can't be built over teams. Even the massive Covid lockdown only reduced emissions 8%. People don't have any idea of what's involved in going beyond that. You may as well try and lose 90% of your body weight. There will be pain. Big companies finally turning towards green energy. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of these companies are just greenwashing. However unfortunately most of them are lying about it and, or only doing it for marketing. I'm hopeful that we have next-gen aircon technology becoming cheap enough for the middle and lower middle classes. If this can reduce energy usage and ozone destruction I'll become an adult in a safe world. It might become more and more important too if global warming continues to rise. More affordable aircon tech means more energy usage, not less. It means more people have access to and use aircon, not that aircon is more efficient and consumes less. Overall the total consumption of electricity goes up with cheaper aircon, even if it is more efficient. That being said I completely agree with cheaper aircon, but the higher power draw of aircon should be counterbalanced by more and more renewable energy going up. Solar is presently the cheapest energy source, bar none, with wind a close second, and we'll just keep having more and more solar and wind energy coming in the future. 
The ozone is also almost fixed. We're on track to not having ozone problems at all anymore by 2060. Working from dot home, reduced working hours. There's more public support for taking big steps to avoid a climate disaster than ever before. It's inspiring to see governments and companies around the world set ambitious goals for reducing emissions. The world's power to invent makes me optimistic. Multiple NGOs, like your own, are helping to raise awareness around climate change and harmful emissions. Seeing governments and businesses around the world starting to notice such initiatives is one of many reasons to be hopefully we reach net emissions by 2050. I'm glad to see youth and younger generations, heck, it doesn't matter the age, becoming more and more active towards such issues. As the next generation to lead, we need bright minds and public support for these important changes in our society. Thanks again for doing these AMAs. I've seen them for a while but have always been too late to reply to them. Glad to finally be around for one. Are you not seriously concerned by the yo-yo nature of US politics with regards to this though? The last four years have basically been a write-off in so many fields and whilst Biden does look set on a much more positive course, does it even matter if another Republican is elected in four years time and works full tilt to undo any good work that is achieved over Biden's term? What do you think could be done on a systemic level to prevent this constant flip-flop of policies? I hope that nuclear programs will take off, lots of people are hating on nuclear power as they think it will be Chernobyl V2, but in reality, today, lots of nuclear programs are way more safer and way more efficient compared to old times, also uranium is really strong and we don't have to worry about it as much as we can recycle large portions of it. If you want to get excited about the future of nuclear power, I'd recommend the 60 Minutes interview with Bill Gates, from February 14, 2021. Skip to 9 o'clock on the mark for just the nuclear part. Exciting stuff. Guess this, people are really scared of nuclear power, it's the way forward. Just have to deal with nuclear waste. As long as they are built to high standards and away from vulnerable areas, looking at you Fukushima. Honestly, I have little faith. Average people have little control over how they live and rely on giant corporations and billionaires to do the right thing, so far as I can tell this is not going well. 75% of my recyclables go into the landfill and I hardly use any motorized transportation. I've got reusable bags up the wazoo and LED lights in every room. All I want is a small house that's easy to warm in the winter on some land where I can grow food, perhaps even a community garden. It feels like all meaningful change is out of my hands because I cannot afford solar panels let alone property to put them on, I am at the mercy of whatever my landlord decides to do and have no choice but to get my groceries from the store, or farmer's market, when I can. Meanwhile every ounce of carbon I fight to prevent myself from contributing is pumped out threefold by mega corporations. Including Microsoft. Thanks. That pretty much sums it up, I think. Just because we're moving towards renewable energy, doesn't mean that the environment is going to get any better so soon. And what exactly is zero net emissions going to do at this point? By 2050, won't adverse effects by the greenhouse gas emissions become irreversible? Isn't global warming just inevitable at this point? We haven't yet arrived at the tipping point just yet. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Just look at what consumers can slash are asked to do with regards to pollution involving plastic. Cities can ban plastic straws or shopping bags but the vast majority of plastic waste in the oceans is cast off junk from the commercial fishing industry. It's like trying to put out a forest fire with a bucket. The people can want change and make changes in their own lives all they want, but we're not even going to get close to net zero without the corporations finally putting the environment over short-term profits. It's like the saying goes only after the last tree has been cut down, only after the last river has been poisoned, only after the last fish has been caught, only then will you find that money cannot be eaten. 
Unchecked capitalism is ruining everything and the expectation of unsustainably unending exponential growth forever and pursuit of such will eventually doom us all if we can't stop it. Science and people working in science give me hope. Politicians and businesses don't. Subscribe for more hot Reddit takes in your inbox, guaranteed.